You know how pretty much every Bond fan agrees that that is one of the most iconic moments in the Bond franchise? Or how everybody can agree Sean Connery's introduction simply is the most classic and suave introduction of any of the Bond actors? Or how everyone virtually agrees that the DB5 is the most iconic Bond card? There seems to be a consensus on a lot of things within this film series. The majority isn't the biggest fan of Die Another Day. Fans can debate who is the best Bond, but most fans respect Sean Connery as Bond. However much as we have an opinion on everything in Bond, there are always people who go against the consensus. Because yes, I even know someone whose favorite Bond film is Die Another Day. Which lunatic assignment did they get you out of? I think we each also have opinions in which we feel we're definitely in the minority or even the only one feeling that way. And that's what we're looking at today in no particular order 5 of my unpopular opinions on the Bond films. Kicking it off with number 1, I don't really like On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Shocking. This is something that didn't used to be so shocking back in the day, but in recent years On Her Majesty's Secret Service has become very beloved and is often seen ranked at the top of Bond fans' list. As you may know, I'm just not the biggest fan of the movie. It's the one I always hoped would grow on me more. Upon my latest watch, I have to admit, I did enjoy it more than ever before, so maybe there's a chance for it to grow more, but my biggest problem with the movie still stands, it's George Lazenby. Or I should say George Lazenby as Bond. I love the guy, dislike his portrayal. But Lazenby isn't my only problem. The plot of Blofeld hypnotizing angels of death through some epileptic ceilings and how does destroying a command center stop the actual angels of death from still spreading the virus? They still have the deadly vials containing it, right? Couldn't Blovel just set up another command center and be back on track? And the fact that Lazenby is dubbed for such a large portion of the movie really always just takes me straight out of it. I made a video recently on how I think Connery would have done had he starred in this movie and I still feel I probably would like it more had that happened. As it stands now, it's a movie I really respect, but wish I liked as much as most fans do. This never happened to the other fella. Number 2. I like The Man with the Golden Gun more than Live and Let Die. What? The Roger Moore Bond films seem to be able to fit into categories divided by their directors. The two early Guy Hamilton ones, the two over-the-top Lewis Gilbert ones, and the three 80s movies by John Glenn. Out of the two early Guy Hamilton ones, Live and Let Die is usually preferred. For me, it's the total opposite. The Man with the Golden Gun has the edge on it in nearly every aspect. It has the more engaging story, the amazing Christopher Lee as a villain putting together that golden gun we all wish we had as a kid, Nick Knack is iconic, the music is great, and Roger Moore is fantastic in it. I give Live and Let Die the more interesting Bond girl though, and the boat chase. But other than that, I even find Sheriff J.W. Pepper more funny and engaging in Golden Gun. Despite him being much more out of place as a Louisiana state police officer out in Thailand, but in Live and Let Die I find him annoying. Here I find him hysterical. And you can't beat that amazing island as one of the best villain layers in the series. So I'm definitely proud to be in a minority that prefers this movie. To us, Mr. Bond, we are the best. Number 3. To Lisa Soto's I Love James So Much line isn't bad acting in License to Kill. You must be joking. I never joke about my videos 007. Well, actually I frequently do, but I'm dead serious with this one. In License to Kill, Sanchez's girlfriend Lupi Lamore comes to Bond's hotel room to warn Pam about Bond being in danger. Having slept with him the night before, she utters the line, I love James so much. 
and everybody seems to agree. That is just such bad acting on her part. How could she love Bond already? Is he just a bubble head? Oh, this is such bad delivery on her part, and I completely disagree. She clearly doesn't love Bond. I always saw this as a deliberate taunt to Pam. It's even shown in the end of the film when Pam does end up with Bond that she clearly doesn't care and just runs off with another dude. Let me explain. Lupe is a cunning woman. She ultimately wants to be freed from Sanchez, but she's still a feisty Latina that knows what's going on. She clearly sees Pam is with Bond in the casino. She knows what's up, she isn't stupid. This is even backed up by the fact that Lupi doesn't flinch when Pam tells her that Bond is with her. So later on in the movie, she sleeps with Bond, completely aware that Pam is doing the same. So even though she comes in to warn Pam, she also likes to poke the bee's nest a little. It's all right, he's safely out of the country by now. You don't understand, last night he stayed with me. You can clearly see in Pam's reaction that this touches her. She wasn't expecting this at all. This is how this was actually written in the script. It's not bad acting, you can even see Q reacts to this clear under the table bitch fight in front of him. Ah, oh, why do you always get tangled up in these shenanigans 007? Grow up. The taunt was a clear intention in the script. So when she utters the line, she isn't guilty of bad acting. Look at Pam's reaction afterwards. I love James so much. I'll be damned if I'll help him. The taunt has worked. Lupi knew exactly that she was going to trigger this reaction from her by letting her know that she had a little taste of the guy that she's starting to develop feelings for. If she truly loved Bond and is just a bubblehead, how come she really doesn't care in the end of the movie? To me, Lupe isn't stupid, she isn't in love, she's just a typical cunning Latina that knows other women around her all too well and knows exactly what she's doing. Number 4. I think Spectre is fine. And you're full of it. 2015 Spectre sadly seems to be one of the most disliked Bond films in recent years. Sometimes I even see it ranked as the worst Craig Bond film, which to me is nuts. Really? You're going to rank this lower than Quantum? At the very least Spectre has actual editing you can follow, film shots that last longer than 3 seconds and whether you dislike or like the story, you can at least follow what's going on. That already puts it above Quantum for me. But even looking at it separately, it's a fan-pleasing Bond film in a lot of ways, or at least it tried to be. Yes, the stepbrother thing really didn't have to happen, and the Nine Eyes program? Eh, I can't say I'm the biggest fan either, but it has one of the most amazingly made pre-title sequences. Craig is superb as Bond in it. Hinks is the best Craig era henchman we've had. Monica Bellucci, despite her brief appearance, is great. The car chase in Rome ending with that badass Bondian moment with the ejector seat. It's honestly great fun. Even seeing Spectre brought back in the modern day does tick some boxes. You all remember how excited we got when we first saw that Spectre room in the trailers and got all excited about the octopus on the ring and stuff? All of that is still actually in the movie, you know. Yes, of course the stepbrother thing takes it a bit down, but not to the bottom, at least not for me. It can rest safely in the middle ground Bond films. And number one, I like Eric Serra's soundtrack for Goldeneye. No, 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 turn this off. Yes, Eric Serra's soundtrack for Goldeneye is often hated upon, and I say to me, there is also a lot to love about it. Yes, you know, I agree that the song that they used for the race between the DB5 and the Ferrari totally sounds like it's from Mario Kart. It's out of place. I can't argue. And yes, I'm also very happy that the original track that Sarah had planned for the tank chase wasn't used and that they blazed out the James Bond theme instead. But for the most part, I really like the industrial type of Bond sound. 
Maybe I'm a sucker for some of the scores that weren't done by John Barry or David Arnold, because I seem to like a lot of them. But this one, even from the gun barrel alone, to me, it's a great sound. The Golden Eye Overture heard throughout the movie is amazing, and it reminds me of Sarah's score of the movie Leon, which I also really enjoy. It gives GoldenEye such a distinctive feel that makes it feel unique in the brass and era of Bond films. With this scene probably being one of my favorite moments in which the score is used so well. You can't win. <laughs> It's simply a fantastic Bond moment that is truly lifted up by the great music and just another one of the many thousands of reasons I love Bond. So those were five of my unpopular opinions on Bond. Do you find yourself agreeing with one or two of them? Maybe more? Maybe you disagree to them all. You probably disagree to them all. Whatever you feel like, leave a comment and also feel free to share your own unpopular opinions on Bond. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.